Welcome to our lecture online and for those who are interested in finding out why we can actually use this rule that the product of two complex numbers in polar form can be calculated like this, let's go ahead and prove that. Alright, so first of all we have the two complex numbers z1 and z2, they're written in polar form. When we multiply them we can say that z1 times z2 is equal to r1 times r2 times the cosine of the sum of the angles plus i times the sine of the sum of the angles. So let's see if that is indeed correct. So let's multiply the two together. So z1 times z2 is equal to, that would be r1 times the cosine of theta1 plus i times the sine of theta1 and that would be multiplied times r2 times the cosine of theta2 plus i times the sine of theta sub 2. Alright, let's do that. So first of all, we can factor out an r1 and r2. So this would indeed be r1 times r2. So we do definitely have that right there. Times, now we have to multiply these two binomials. So it would be cosine of theta1 times the cosine of theta sub 2. And the uh, uh, cosine of theta1 times i times the sine of theta sub 2. So now we multiply this times this, that would be plus i times the sine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta sub 2. And finally multiply this times this, that would be plus i squared times the sine of theta 1 times the sine of theta sub 2. Okay, let's quickly check to see if we had that correct. So I have theta 1, cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, cosine theta 1, i sine theta 2, sine i sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 and i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2. So, so far so good, so that's the multiplication. Now, first of all, i squared is equal to negative 1, so I can replace this to negative 1, and here I have a cosine of theta 1 sine of theta 2 sine of theta 1 cosine theta 2. I can factor out an i and see what we get there, and so then we end up with this is equal to r1 r2 times. Well, I have this quantity right here, which is the cosine of theta sub 1, cosine of theta sub 2, and I'm going to subtract from that because this becomes a negative 1, this quantity right here, so it becomes minus sine of theta sub 1, sine of theta sub 2, plus i times, and I have this quantity right here, so that would be equal to cosine of theta 1, sine of theta sub 2, plus sine of theta sub 1, cosine of theta sub 2. Alright, so now we need to know our trigonometric identities, because cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b is equal to the cosine of a plus b. So this can be replaced by r1 r2 times the cosine of theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2, plus i times, and here we have the cosine of a, times the sine of b plus the sine of a times the cosine of b, well this can be written as the sine of a plus b. So this can be i times the sine of a plus b, which is theta 1 plus theta sub 2. Like that, oop, and well I don't need parentheses here, I can leave that parentheses out. There we go. Alright, and then notice that this is exactly what we have over here. So simply using the trigonometric identities, that the cosine a cosine b, let me write it over here, so we have cosine a, so cosine a uh, times cosine b minus sine a sine b, that can be written as cosine of a plus b. And here we have cosine a sine b plus sine a cosine b, that will be equal to the sine of a plus b. And so replacing those two by those two, that gives us then the equation we were looking for, that gives us this part, and so therefore we've proven that that is correct. And that's how we do that.